there was a very great king. His name was Uzziah. Now he was after David and Solomon. He did a lot for Judah. But like Saul and like Solomon in his latter days, he was totally, totally corrupted because fame and fortune <laughs> has gone into his mind and he thought he was just the great guy. So like Saul and like Solomon, his end was not good. It was really not good. But something happened the day King Uzziah died. Isaiah saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. Now the whole book of Isaiah is like you see the bad on the one side, the good on the one side. Then he's, uh, taking, he's prophesying bad stuff, utter destruction, and he's prophesying light and rivers and watered gardens. And you have to understand what was going on there. Amos describes it as, uh, in wrath, remember mercy. Judah and Israel was totally bankrupt themselves with idols and th they... You know, it, it goes so far as in Isaiah 121, he says, How has this great city now become a harlot? He starts in the book of Isaiah and he says, Isaiah was called for Judah and Jerusalem. And he said, I have gotten myself children, but they were totally disobedient. Isaiah 5 says, I've planted a vineyard and I've hedged it around, but all it brought forth was thistles and sour grapes and wild grapes. And it never did what it was supposed to do. So the book of Isaiah is actually a warning unto Jerusalem. Now, what is very, very interesting is that Isaiah prophesies right through the captivity of Babylon, right through the uh, Roman rule, right through uh, Jesus being born, Jesus being crucified, dead, raised again, right through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He prophesies the burning down of 70 AD, and he prophesies on the kingdom to come. So <laughs> those prophets never understood what they prophesied because in 1 Peter it says they searched diligently to see who are they prophesying to. So the only way you can understand it is when you understand the spiritual language in the book and you know who he's talking to. He is there prophesying to Judah and Jerusalem. And then he comes prophesying to Mount Zion, which is the church. <laughs> and he, he speaks about the spirit being poured out. Come on, in one chapter he says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, but darkness is going to be on the world. Now this is all happening at the same time. And you've got to understand this concept of what is happening there. After Jesus came out of the wilderness, he went to the temple and he deliberately looked for a scroll and he started, he found the place in Isaiah where it says, this is the year of the favor of the Lord. The blind will see, the dead will hear, the lame will recover, the people that sit in darkness will see light. But he, you know, it's amazing. He leaves out a portion which is called the day of vengeance. So it was not his plan. After everything, it was not God's plan to take out Jerusalem. So in Matthew 24, as Jesus left the temple for the last time, <laughs> he sat and he looked and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, what more could I have done for you? But you would not listen. This is what he says in Isaiah. He says, if only you would come and we would reason, though your sins be as scarlet, it will be white as snow. Now we use that scripture and we can because it's in the spirit. It's the same pattern that, that repeats. But God actually gave it to Israel and said, I want to clean you up. I don't want you to have this day of calamity. But when Jesus came, he came to his own, but his own rejected him because they were totally infiltrated with Satan's seed. And in Babylon, they started their own worship system within the system, which is the fig tree. That's why Jesus actually cursed the fig tree. And it was their day of calamity, the very day they crucified Christ, because they allied with the Roman system to take out the Christ. And that is predicted in Psalm 2 for us, where he says, Why do the heathen rage? Why do the rulers of the world come together to meet strength and to take out the Messiah? But God sits in the heavens and he laughs. Oh my word. Now, there is a problem when we take the wrong prophecies for the wrong groups of people. We must understand that the day of vengeance is over. 
It started the minute they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. The minute the lion became the lamb, he opened the seals that was already sealed by Daniel in Babylon. And we see the four horses, the four agitations, the four world empires running. And for the first time, you could understand the whole taking down and removal of the old system, which started. It started in Babylon, but the day of vengeance started after Christ has had his hour on the cross. Please look at it. He said, my hour is coming. And when the hour came, the day of vengeance was launched, but also the year of the favor of the Lord. So on the world, it became dark, but he was a thief in the night. We are children of the light. He's not coming to us as a thief in the night. You know, I always wondered, how could they tell God he's a thief? How can the Bible say that? But the minute Judas Iscariot ate of the soup, he says, Satan entered him, he went out, and it was night. So that was the night he was talking about. And Jesus warned his own disciples to get out of that. So <laughs> he was the thief in the night. He took them out there. The Bible is so awesome. If we can just understand it, it's not a book to fear. It's not a book to fear. The day of vengeance is not for us. It is for those people he says in Matthew 23, verse 36, he says, it will be upon this generation. Two times in Matthew 24, he says, all these things will be on this generation. We are not that generation. It is exactly the 40 years after the cross, when the removal of the old was into its last stages. <laughs> that was the darkest day ever, described by Daniel as the time of tribulation. He says there will never ever be such a time again. Now, John at the end of this time writes, and in Revelation 1, 9, he says, I, John, your brother, <laughs> in the tribulation and the kingdom, and he steps over, and in the patience of Jesus Christ. So we are actually living in the time of patience of Jesus Christ. So God wants us to be the victorious overcomers. <laughs> His intention for us was to become like Christ on the earth, to be rulers and reigners here in the midst of this fallen creation because he didn't, he, he, he didn't save creation. He gave all the power back in our hands for us to stand up and overcome this world. The day of vengeance was on that wicked generation that said, we have no king but Caesar. Let his blood come on us. And the day of vengeance of the wrath of God, you know what, he says he's gonna rule them there with a rod of iron. Now Rome is iron, and Jesus ruled them with a rod of iron, totally taking out the old, bringing in the new. It was the worst day ever on the face of the earth. And that is what the book of uh, Revelation describes, the fulfillment of what happened there and then the last two chapters is all on the kingdom it's over guys our time is a time of the spirit if only we can hear what the spirit says mm -hmm.